Chapter 27 When the time came, we set sail for Italy. Paul and several other prisoners were placed in the custody of an army officer named Julius, a captain of the Imperial Regiment, and Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica, was also with us. We left on a boat whose home port was Adramitium. It was scheduled to make several stops at ports along the coast to the province of Asia. The next day, when we docked at Sidon, Julius was very kind to Paul and let him go ashore to visit with friends so they could provide for his needs. Putting out to sea from there, we encountered headwinds that made it difficult to keep the ship on course, so we sailed north of Cyprus between the island and the mainland. We passed along the coast of the provinces of Cilicia and Pamphylia, landing at Myra in the province of Lycia. There, the officer found an Egyptian ship from Alexandria that was bound for Italy, and he put us on board. We had several days of rough sailing, and after great difficulty, we finally neared Nidus. But the wind was against us, so we sailed down to the leeward side of Crete, past the Cape of Salmoni. We struggled along the coast with great difficulty, and finally arrived at Fair Havens, near the city of Lycia. We had lost a lot of time. The weather was becoming dangerous for long voyages by then because it was so late in the fall, and Paul spoke to the ship's officers about it. Sirs, he said, I believe there is trouble ahead if we go on. Shipwreck, loss of cargo, injuries, and danger to our lives. But the officer in charge of the prisoners listened more to the ship's captain and the owner than to Paul. And since Fairhavens was an exposed harbor, a poor place to spend the winter, most of the crew wanted to go to Phoenix, farther up the coast of Crete, and spend the winter there. Phoenix was a good harbor with only a southwest and northwest exposure. When a light wind began blowing from the south, the sailors thought they could make it, so they pulled up anchor and sailed along close to shore. But the weather changed abruptly, and a wind of typhoon strength, a northeaster, they called it, caught the ship and blew it out to sea. They couldn't turn the ship into the wind, so they gave up and let it run before the gale. We sailed behind a small island named Kauda, where with great difficulty we hoisted aboard the lifeboat that was being towed behind us. Then we banded the ship with ropes to strengthen the hull. The sailors were afraid of being driven across to the sandbars of Syrtis off the African coast, so they lowered the sea anchor and were thus driven before the wind. The next day, as gale force winds continued to batter the ship, the crew began throwing the cargo overboard. The following day, they even threw out the ship's equipment and anything else they could lay their hands on. The terrible storm raged unabated for many days, blotting out the sun and the stars until at last all hope was gone. No one had eaten for a long time. Finally, Paul called the crew together and said, Men, you should have listened to me in the first place left fair havens. You could have avoided all this injury and loss. But take courage. None of you will lose your lives, even though the ship will go down. For last night, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me, and he said, Don't be afraid, Paul, for you will surely stand trial before Caesar. What's more, God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with him. So take courage. I believe God. It will be just as he said, but we will be shipwrecked on an island. About midnight on the fourteenth night of the storm, as we were being driven across the Sea of Adria, the sailors sensed land was near. They took soundings and found the water was only 120 feet deep. A little later, they sounded again and found only 90 feet. At this rate, they were afraid we would soon be driven against the rocks along the shore, so they threw out four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. When the sailors tried to abandon the ship, they lowered the lifeboat as though they were going to put out anchors from the prow. Paul said to the commanding officer and the soldiers, You will all die unless the sailors stay aboard. So the soldiers cut the ropes and let the boat fall off. As the darkness gave way to early morning light, Paul begged everyone to eat. You haven't touched food for two weeks, he said. Please eat something now for your own good, for not a hair of your heads will perish. Then he took some bread gave thanks to God before them all, and broke off a piece and ate it. Then everyone was encouraged, and all 276 of us began eating, for that is the number we had aboard. After eating, the crew lightened the ship further by throwing the cargo of wheat overboard. 
When morning dawned, they didn't recognize the coastline, but they saw a bay with a beach and wondered if they could get between the rocks and get the ship safely to shore. So they caught off the anchors and left them in the sea. Then they lowered the rudders, raised the foresail, and headed toward shore. But the ship hit a shoal and ran aground. The bow of the ship stuck fast, while the stern was repeatedly smashed by the force of the waves and began to break apart. The soldiers wanted to kill the prisoners to make sure they didn't swim ashore and escape. But the commanding officer wanted to spare Paul, so he didn't let them carry out their plan. Then he ordered all who could swim to jump overboard first and make for land, and he told the others to try for it on planks and debris from the broken ship. So everyone escaped safely ashore.